Hello everyone. Welcome to lab seven, part one. This lab will be split into two parts because we need additional time to explain tuning the parameters and operating the scope software. In the first part of lab seven, we are going to discuss a new operating mode called VFC that allows us to use the encoder on the motor for more accurate speed control. This mode adds additional control algorithms that should be tuned to optimize motor performance. In this lab, we're going to define what parameter tuning is, show examples of different tuning results, and introduce the features of the scope tool that's available in the Motion Studio software. The mode drive has several different operating modes that can be changed in the motor startup for different applications. In the previous labs, we have been operating our motor in a voltage and frequency mode that is open loop which means that even though we have an encoder connected to the inverter, we have been ignoring the signal. VF mode is great for a lot of simple applications where precise speed or positioning is not needed, but the mode drive is capable of more complex operating modes where speed, positioning, or constant torque is important. In this lab, we're going to change the startup mode from VF mode to VFC mode. VFC mode stands for voltage flux control, which switches on the ability of the motor drive to determine the orientation of the magnetic fields in the motor and apply the three phase voltage appropriately to control the magnetic field. Now VF or VFC modes are only for asynchronous motors. These will not work for permanent magnet servo motors. There's a specific servo mode that has to be used when operating permanent magnet motors. Since VFC is for asynchronous motors, it can be used with or without an encoder. In our lab today, we are using the encoder signal to improve the speed control accuracy. The encoder has a high resolution, so it sends valuable feedback to the Movi drive so its internal controller can determine how the motor is responding to the control inputs it's sending. Oftentimes, when using more complex motor control methods, the motor performance will need to be tuned further than just the initial parameters that are recommended by the first time through the startup. So we're going to demonstrate some methods to adjust the Movi Drive parameters for this new operating mode. Every application is unique and will have different requirements for how it should be operated. This is because there are varying masses of all the pieces that make up the total load the motor has to control. Every application will have inertia, which is a value of how the load resists a change to its speed or direction. This is where in the design phase of an application, the motor inertia has to be properly sized with regards to the maximum load inertia the application will have. If there are very large differences between these inertias, for example, being more than 10 times different, it can be challenging for the motor and inverter to control the load. Some applications like conveyors may not need very accurate control and other applications that have to stop in specific locations will need very precise control. When tuning the motor performance, there's a balance you have to find between the level of precision needed and the operation still being in steady control. For example, winding or unwinding spools of material can present tuning challenges because the mass is continuously changing and so is the diameter of the spool, which changes the torque requirements from the motor. The motor needs to be able to control the changing mass and diameter effectively, but it still needs to be tuned well so that it doesn't tear the material from being too stiff of control while not being so loose of control that the roll doesn't wind up correctly. The controller in the motor drive uses a proportional integral algorithm to adjust the motor's performance. So let's go over the steps that the controller goes through to optimize the motor's performance. The process variable here on the vertical axis of this graph can be several things such as a change to the load, a set point, or a change in the direction of rotation. The first step of the controller is to detect 
that there has been a change. The controller has a slight delay to process this change where it compares the difference between the new value and what the motor is currently doing. And then the controller will apply adjustments based on how the parameters are tuned to achieve the desired change at the motor. Then there will be some initial overshoot or undershoot of the motor depending on the level of adjustment that was applied. The controller is continuously receiving feedback about the motor's performance and through further readjustments, the motor will eventually stabilize around the new value and should have minimal fluctuation. If there is a new change right after this, no matter how large or small it is, the controller will process the change, apply the calculated adjustments, and keep going through the process again to maintain control of the motor around the new value. There are several different ways to approach tuning the motor's performance. What we're accomplishing when we tune is adjusting the proportional integral loop to have the best response for the application. One way that we can tune the PI loop is to modify the parameters manually. You would need an experienced understanding of these parameters to know how you should adjust each one because some of the parameters have precision to the thousandths of a decimal place. So small changes can have dramatic effects to the motor's performance. Once you get more comfortable with the parameters, I recommend to adjust some of these manually because this is the only way to fine tune the performance. As you're just starting to learn the MobiDrive parameters, I recommend starting the tuning in a semi-automatic way. This is easier because it's only a couple of parameters that you are changing, but that reduces the ability to fine tune the motor's performance. The semi-automatic tuning method is done by modifying the stiffness and inertia values only, and then applying the recommended tuning parameters from the MobiDrive startup. If you know the real inertia of the system from the machine designer, then you can use that value for the inertia. If you don't know the real inertia, that's okay too. In those scenarios, we recommend starting with an inertia value that is 10 times the motor inertia. If you're using an SEW motor, it will have the motor inertia shown in the startup tool. So finding that value is very easy. Setting the load inertia to a value that's 10 times the motor inertia is just a starting point, and it will likely change as you go through the process of improving the performance. The stiffness parameter acts like a multiplier to the tuning and can range from a value of 0.5 to 2. The motor startup defaults to a stiffness of 1, and when you're going through the tuning process, it's recommended to keep the stiffness as close to 1 as possible and make small tenth of a decimal place adjustments up or down as needed because this does act as a multiplier. Sometimes you may not be able to notice the differences the tuning adjustments have made just by watching the application. So we're going to use the scope software to record measurements of the operation and analyze the performance. Let's take a look at the different scope results that we can get. If the controller is tuned too loose, we will see that the actual response from the motor has large overshoots and undershoots, and it takes a long time to settle to the set point. In this scenario, we would need to stiffen the tuning parameters to have a more accurate response. If we tune the parameters too stiff, then the motor's actual response wouldn't have the large overshoots and undershoots but the operation will fluctuate rapidly around the set point and potentially introduce vibration in the motor because it's unstable. You wouldn't want to leave the motor performance like this because it's possible for mechanical damage to happen to the motor or the application if the control is too stiff. Now that we've seen the extreme ends of tuning, being too loose or too stiff, through further tuning of the parameters, we should arrive at an optimal parameter setting where there is most likely some slight overshoot and undershoot at the end of acceleration and deceleration, but the motor should quickly settle around the set point and remain controlled through each change 
in the set point. Now the scope tool that we'll use to analyze the motor performance is already included in our Motion Studio software. We use this tool to configure the recording variables that we want the Mobi Drive to capture. Even though we need Motion Studio to set up the scope configuration, the recording will happen on the Mobi Drive itself, not on the computer. This means after we send the configuration from Motion Studio, we could disconnect the computer and the scope will still be able to capture the data. In a tuning scenario, you probably won't be disconnecting your computer because you're actively making changes and wanting to analyze the result immediately, but being able to disconnect your computer can be helpful if you need to capture some measurements around a sporadic condition and you don't know when or if the condition will happen again. If you've never used the scope tool before, there is a slight learning curve to using it. There is a lot of configurability inside of the scope tool and different methods you can use to analyze the measurements. It doesn't harm the Mobi Drive to play with the scope tool while the application is operating, so feel free to play with this tool and different scope configurations and see what kind of data you can gather. Since the scope happens on the Mobi Drive, it can only conduct one recording at a time. The final recording is also stored in volatile memory. This means you need to upload the recording before starting another one. If you don't upload the previous recording first, it will be overwritten by the new recording. Also, the recording will be deleted if the Mobi Drive is powered off or if a fault reset command is sent. If you are trying to capture a sporadic condition or a fault event, you have to make sure to connect the computer and upload the recording before any of those things happen. If you lost a recording, you would have to start the recording over and wait for the condition to occur again. So let's go over some of the common features in the software that we'll use to configure and analyze the scope measurements. The scope toolbar is a quick location at the top of the software window for us to see the status of the recording, start and stop it, and analyze the measurements. The colored circles on the left act like a traffic light and depending on which circle is illuminated indicates different states of the scope on the Mobi Drive. If we want to save the recording or open one that was previously saved, we have buttons for those file operations. The next set of buttons is where we can call up the scope configuration and change any of those settings, or we can restart it with the settings we previously used. If we want to start or stop the scope manually, we can force the trigger event. If we need to cancel the recording so we can change the configuration, we can do that. And after the scope has been triggered either manually or automatically, this button will be selectable showing that the measurements are available to upload to the computer. Once we have the recording measurements on our computer screen, we have buttons to scale it to better fit in the window. We can use the cursors to pinpoint certain points of our recording and use two different cursors for comparison. The arrow controls are a way to organize the measurements on the screen. And we can zoom in and out of the measurements for more precision analysis of the waveforms. The scope setup screen is where we will configure all the settings and variables that will be sent to the Mobi Drive to record. The measurement values are all of the variables that can be recorded. The scope is capable of recording eight different variables at once, and there are a lot of options here, like recording the output current, the encoder position, states of the inputs, etc. So you will need to look through these drop down menus to find the variable that you would like to record. The sample time is how frequently a data point is captured for each of the variables that are being recorded. Shorter sample times will have data points that are closer together, and longer sample times will have data points that are further apart. But the memory in the Mobi Drive is not infinite, so it can only store a fixed amount of data. So if you choose a very short sample time, you will have better precision in your measurements, but the recording may only represent 
three or four seconds of total recording time before the memory is filled. If you choose a longer sample time, it reduces the precision of the measurements, but you can have recordings that represent 10, 20, 30, or more seconds of total recording time before the memory is filled. The sample time you choose will need to vary depending on what is being analyzed. The next setting is the pre-trigger percentage. The trigger event is what causes the recording to start or stop automatically. The blue bar represents the total recording time, and we can place the trigger in different locations. The trigger event can be set up for different conditions, such as the analog signals, the inputs or outputs, or specific fault codes. So you have to place this pre-trigger percentage in the correct location, depending on what is being recorded. At the bottom of the screen is where you can configure your trigger events. If you want to trigger on the inputs or the outputs, you will have those selections in the trigger terminal box. If you want to trigger when the motor reaches a specific speed, you can configure that in the analog trigger box. If you have a specific binary state of a bit that you want to trigger on, you can do that through the digital trigger box. The error box is where you can set a specific fault number that you want to trigger on. If you leave it to its default setting of triple zero, then the scope will trigger on any fault that occurs. The software allows you to have multiple scope windows open, so I want to mention an essential step in those scenarios. If you have multiple windows open on your computer, and are wanting to change the scope configuration, you will want to go through this procedure to make sure that the new configuration is sent to the Movi Drive. You'll first need to make sure that you have the correct configuration screen pulled up. Then you will press the Start button, which will send the configuration to the Movi Drive. Then you will wait 10 seconds to make sure the Movi Drive has received the settings. And you will then press the Cancel button, which will stop the recording on the Movi Drive. You will then need to press the start button one more time to resend the configuration. This ensures that the Mobi Drive is receiving the correct configuration and not something that is open on a background window. If you don't do these steps and have multiple windows open, it's possible when you go to upload the measurements, it may not be the configuration you wanted to capture. So if you press start, cancel, and start again, it just ensures that the Mobi Drive is using the updated configuration. Once you've done that, you can click close and use your computer for other things while the scope operates on the Mobi Drive. Or you can leave this configuration window open and the load button will become selectable once the scope measurements are ready to upload. So you can click on that to start your analysis of the recording. All right, this concludes part one of lab seven. In part two of this lab, we will go into the Motion Studio software, change the operating mode, and evaluate how the motor performs with different tuning parameters using the scope tool. Thank you for your attention. Take care and have a good day.